Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Sandra here and today we're in a beautiful environment. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. We're in the forest, so I'm feeling super grateful for all the birds, the bees, and the trees. And today's topic is gonna be on birdies. You got it, mango. So let's take in mother nature for just a moment and listen to the beautiful birds singing their songs. Now I just wanted to remind everybody, I know it's been a super crazy year and if you're going through a tough time right now, just remember, tough times don't last. Tough people do. So with that, let's jump into today's topic. Today I'm going to do a Q&A on mango questions because I get a ton of mango questions on a regular basis, sometimes through email, sometimes through the comments here on YouTube, and other times DMs on Instagram. First, I'm going to address a question that I recently got, which is, can you speak Thai? So what ka? I can only speak a little bit of Thai. Chancho saparot. So we did live in Thailand for about two years, but I can speak only a little bit of Thai because it was a really difficult language for me to learn but I do know a little bit in a couple of other languages. I can speak a little bit more in Mandarin Chinese and a little bit of Spanish, Polish. Yeah, yeah. So the most common question I think that I get is where did we get Mango's cage? So the first aviary or really large cage that Mango had in Thailand, I actually got on an online platform. So I'm going to share some of these online platforms with you guys and tell you where you could find cages in your area or what you can Google up. So if you are in Asia where we got Mango's first cage that later on we had to sell because we were leaving Thailand, um, was actually off of an online platform where you can do all kinds of shopping. It's called Lazada. It's available in Thailand as well as a couple of other different countries in Asia. You could also check Alibaba or AliExpress. I've seen some of the cages on there. Just make sure that you get a good quality one and that it's really sturdy and that the doors lock properly. You just want to make sure that you're getting your conure a really roomy cage. So I've had someone ask me what does roomy mean? The bigger the better. As big as your budget will allow you to get because conures will explore every inch of their cage and they just love the space and the room. They are very active birds. Um, another place that I've recently or in the last few months discovered that has really good and high quality cages are King's Cages and Montana Cages. And you can just throw this into your internet browser and you'll be able to find them. King's Cages um, does ship, I think, around the world, and they do have a website. They're based in the States, but there are also websites that distribute for them. So if you are, for example, in the UK or in Europe, you could check out Northern Parrots. I've seen a lot of really awesome cages on their website as well. So if you look it up on Google or on your internet browser in your area, I'm sure that you'll be able to find a pet store or a distributor that sells them where you could purchase them from. So I hope that that's going to be helpful to you finding an aviary or a nice large cage of for your bird. Next question is where do we get Mango's toys? So the majority of Mango's toys are actually from Planet Pleasures and if you want 15% off you can use discount code MANGO15 but I also get some of his toys from shopping online platforms like when we were in Thailand we used Lazada or you can also check Amazon or an online shopping platform that's similar to where you live. Sorry for all these flies. And I always choose toys that are natural or natural wood toys because I want to avoid all those dyes and any harmful materials. I also now avoid string and rope altogether and 
go for the natural stuff. So you could find toys at your local bird store or pet store. Planet Pleasures uses natural and safe materials for their toys, which is why we really love them. And you could also, if you're in the States, or actually I think Bird Tricks ships all over the world when it comes to their toys, you can also get your toys from Bird Tricks. They also use safe and natural materials. Next question, do all of your Sun Conyer videos apply to all Conyers? So the short answer to that is yes. You can apply all of this information that I share on Sun Conyers to your other Conyers, whether it's a green cheek or a cinnamon Conyer or a turquoise green cheek Conyer or a pineapple Conyer. They're all in the same family. So yes, you can use the toys and the perches and the diet and the training tips and everything I share for all kinds of Conyers. Another question that I get often is how old is Mango? So Mango will be two years old in July. He is a July baby and he was born in 2019. So this year he will be two years old. Another really great question that I received recently is what is my favorite enrichment for Mango? So when it comes to Mango, his favorite enrichment I would say is probably toys and foraging opportunities. But enrichment means to enhance your bird's life. So you're making their life fuller. In other words, you're making sure that they are living their best life. So we want to provide all kinds of enrichment for our birds. And enrichment doesn't just mean toys and foraging opportunities. Although to answer that question, that is Mango's favorite because he loves to just destroy his toys and get into foraging opportunities because that's what comes naturally to him. So that's something that we want to provide for our birds because work and play is an enjoyment for them. And if you're showing your bird a foraging opportunity and they don't know what to do with it, if it's a new toy or something new that you're providing or you made for them, and you can check out my free foraging opportunities video for more on that, then you can show them how to do it because they'll learn by watching you. My favorite enrichment for Mango is diet and that would probably be my first one because diet is so important. It makes sure that your bird is healthy, they're not underweight or overweight, because if they are under or overweight, they're probably not going to be happy. And diet also directly impacts their behavior. So you wanna make sure that you're providing your bird with a really good and healthy diet and staying away from a seed diet or any of those colored pellets and all that kind of junk food for birds. Another great form of enrichment is training and socialization. That's because enrichment is also providing them opportunities to learn and birds love to learn. So you'll notice that your bird probably loves training, but they're not gonna love training all day long. They'll love training in small segments and it's something that they're going to enjoy because they're also having that bonding time with you. And the other one is socialization. So they're socializing and interacting with maybe your other pets, kind of like Lambo and Mango, or they're interacting and socializing with other members in your family, friends, or people who come to the house, just so that they're comfortable around other people. Sure, you might be their person and they trust you and they love you, but they need to be comfortable with other people. So when you go on an adventure like us today, then you can know that they feel comfortable and they're going to be happy with a sitter. And I'm going to mention one more form of enrichment and this one is probably another favorite of mine and that's love. Giving your bird lots of attention, time, cuddles, and just spending quality time with them. It's not necessarily always about the quantity of time that you're gonna spend with your bird, but the quality of time. So just making sure that you just give them lots of love. Another common question I get is, where do you get Mango's perches? So I have a variety of different perches for mango in his aviary and some of them are like these sanded perches where it'll file his nails down and other ones are wooden but I have a variety of different perches so that I can make sure that he's exercising his feet because foot care or feet care for your bird is also really important so if you have a variety of different perches and sizes and textures 
it's gonna help with your birds feet so I actually got pretty much all of our purchase on that online shopping platform that I told you about in Thailand it's called Lazada but if it's not available in your country you can just do a quick like Amazon search or internet search and just type in like branch purchase or sanded purchase wooden purchase for birds or you could just Google variety of perches for parrots and I'm sure something will come up and you'll find a variety as well on probably Amazon and Amazon seems to be everywhere so that's a good place to start. Another question I recently got which I loved is does Mango dance? Yes, Mango dances and he loves music and I love to dance and I love music too. So Mango and I just jam out together all the time. It was actually really funny because during Christmas, he was jamming so hard to all the Christmas carols, especially Michael Buble. So he really loves Michael Buble and he really loves like upbeat music. So you can play music for your bird and figure out which types of music they really like. Mango also likes really calming and serene like classical music or nature music playlists that I find on YouTube for him but believe it or not Conyers actually have rhythm and they like to dance they have different tastes in music and your conure will probably dance with you they'll bob their head and they'll sway side to side actually I would say that mango is a better dancer than my husband <laughs> Another common question that I get about Mango is how did we get him to eat veggies? I find that a lot of people are struggling getting their conures or their parrots to eat veggies. So the number one thing with Mango was that we started him young. When he was weaning off of formula, we went directly into using the Bird Tricks cookbook and I was making chop for him and sometimes I was making my own chop recipes. So we started him young. He basically weaned off of formula formula onto veggies and figured out which veggies he really likes and just got accustomed to eating them. So the first tip is to start them young. If you're noticing that your bird's not interested in veggies or you're trying to get them to eat it, you can make birdie bread and sneak it in there or you can just let them play with the veggies. Like when they're bathing, you can offer some like wet lettuce and wet greens for them to nibble and pick away at and play with. But what you can also do is offer a buffet. So offer a variety of different vegetables and let them figure out which ones they really like and they're going to eat. You can also offer veggies in different types of ways. So you can cook them and make sure that they're steamed or a little softer or a little warmer or raw. So offer a variety, but offer them in different ways so that they can experience different textures and different temperatures of the veggies as you well. Can also get creative and add it into their toys like weave it into their toys or into their cage or into some foraging opportunities so that they can have fun with the vegetables and get accustomed to eating them. You could also mince some veggies and add it to some mashed banana and make like a banana veggie pudding that they're going to have fun digging into and exploring and tasting. So there's a lot of different ways to get your bird introduced to veggies and starting to like veggies. Now this brings me to my next question. Sandra, can you share some more chop recipes with us? And the answer to that is yes. The next time that I'm making my own chop, I will share it with you guys. I'll do a YouTube video on it and I'll post it on the blog as well. I haven't posted a new chop recipe that I made since Christmas. I did make a Christmas chop, but I will make maybe a special chop for Mango for his birthday, which is coming up this summer. <laughs> Recently, I got asked, how can I tell the gender of my bird? Are they a female or are they a male? So with Conyers, especially Sun Conyers, since they all look the same or very similar at least, it's actually very difficult to tell if it's a female or a male. You would have to go to your avian vet and they're going to DNA test that so the only and best way really is to DNA test your bird to find out their sex but I have heard a little secret that sometimes breeders put the band on the left foot if it's a male and on the right foot if it's a female I'm not sure if that's true but mango is a male and his band is on his left foot so 
Maybe that's true, maybe it's not true. Maybe some breeders do it, maybe some don't. Don't take my word for it, I'm just sharing what I know. The question that I get sometimes is, can I get a conure or a poodle, because I get this question for both, if I commute to work or to school? Now, people do it, so I'm not really going to answer this question with a yes or a no. We actually work from home and we are home a lot of the time. So we're able to spend a lot of time with Lambo and Mango and be around them pretty much all day long and even on weekends. So we are around a lot of the time for them. But if you do commute, I mean, Poodles actually are prone to separation anxiety and they don't like being alone for long periods of time. They are companion dogs and they're really people-y and they attach to their people. So that's going to be something for you to decide and depending on what your shifts are at work and how long you're in school for and how many courses you're taking and things like that. And with birds, I mean, lots of people do it as well and we're able to leave Mango for like a few hours if we're going out shopping or we're going out somewhere but I've never left them for more than like an eight hour day but still I'm not sure that it's something that I would want to personally do and leave my conure or my poodle all day long every day but again it depends on how far your commute is can you come home on your lunch breaks how long your shifts are and things like that is there somebody else at home or a family member or friend that can check in with them or take your poodle for a walk or come hang out with your conure and things like that so it's a lot of factors to consider and that decision is going to be ultimately up to you and your personal situation Another common question that I get is, how do I get my conure to come to my hand? Or how do I get my conure to interact with me? They're not interacting with me. So I think I'm going to do a YouTube video on this topic alone and use Mango as our model and show you guys all of our ways. But I made some notes because I wanted to make sure that I don't forget anything and I'm just gonna leave you guys with eight tips. Number one is be patient and work at your bird's pace. Number two, try target training and through target training, introduce or offer rewards that your bird is going to like, like nuts or seeds. So if nuts and seeds aren't part of their regular diet, it's going to be a reward for them and they're going to be eager to work with you. Another one is clicker training. So you can try target or clicker training and use rewards to get them to interact with you and start to build that trust with you and build that bond with you and spend that time with you. Provide a good environment. So make sure they have a big roomy cage with lots of toys and perches, clean dish bowls, fresh water, a quiet environment and just make sure that they feel good in their space and over time they're gonna to start to feel good with you too remember it's gonna take some time for them to get used to you and bond with you and trust you just like with any new person or animal that comes into your life you can't expect it to happen right away you just have to be patient and kind with it um, be consistent. That's another thing. You need to be consistent every single day. If you're doing these things, spending time with your parrot, trying target training, clicker training, you need to be consistent with it on a regular basis or really on a daily basis. Use positive enforcement. So make sure that your parrot is building that trust with you and knowing that they're having a positive interaction with you every single time. You also want to provide out of the cage time and enrichment which we talked about earlier so make sure you're providing them with that free time so that they can feel free and you know engaged not caged and the last tip that I'm going to leave you with on this topic is to learn your Conyers behavior and the sounds that they make are their feathers puffed up is their head bobbing what do their eyes look like what sounds are they making are they screaming or making little cute murps learn their behavior so you can learn to understand when they want to interact with you and when they don't so that's it for today guys thank you so much for joining me in this beautiful rainforest today. As always, I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that I answered all of your questions. If you have more questions, 
just leave them in the comments below. I love chatting with you guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.